Hello, Wade Explorers. Thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, we want to thank you for watching. For those of you who follow our channel, you notice we focus on informative and educating content within the African continent. Today, we are looking at the patient zero, known as Thomas Eric Duncan, the first African to die out of the continent in the United States sick of the Ebola virus. In this episode, I would align to you the chain of events that the death of Thomas Duncan transformed the perception of the Ebola disease in West Africa. Also, in Thomas Duncan's situation, it also taught the world that the fact that the disease occurred in one part of the world and been ignored could transfer and also infect people from different regions within the space of a couple of hours. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. On September 20, 2014, a 42-year-old Liberian native, Thomas Eric Duncan, arrived in Dallas, Texas from a plane flight that originated in Monrovia, Liberia. Duncan came to the United States ostensibly to reunite with his entrenched teenage son and mother's daughter, Louise Troy. Two at the time, then being the girlfriend in Liberia, Troy had a son that lived in Dallas. Unknown before that point, Duncan entered the international public consciousness because he had flown from the hot zone of Ebola virus outbreak, then occurring in West Africa. On March 30, 2014, Liberia reported two cases of people with Ebola disease. Six months later, on 30th of, 30th of September, over 3,000 people had died from the Ebola in West Africa, including more than 1,000 in Liberia alone. Donka, who will be the first reported case of Ebola in the United States, as of that particular moment, only fatality was symptoms free and not contagious when he left Liberia by way of Brussels, Belgium, and through Washington, D.C. The deadly Ebola disease has symptomatic similar to mosquitoes' birth, infection, malaria. Both malaria and Ebola are endemic at the time within the continent. Though malaria is now more far widespread and also dangerous, so did the worst night disease, which, like malaria and mosquitoes, burn was the first identified in 1937 in East African nation of Uganda. Moving forward, unlike two diseases, Ebola spread by physical contact with an infected person or animal. In looking at that, Thomas Eric Duncan's flight from Monrovia to Dallas is 24 in just 24 hours has a stark testimony to the impact of global travel. There are four strains of Ebola, the hemogenic fever disease, and also which actually those diseases caused by several unique clusters of viruses uh, with genetic origin. The Ebola Zai, so the point out, the Ebola Sudan, and you also have the Ebola Thai, and you do have uh, the Ebola Reston, which only affects a monkey. The name of this disease derived from the Ebola River in North Central region of Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly Zai. Medical scientists first identified Ebola as a disease in 1976 in Zai, where over 280 people died, and Sudan, uh, where it killed over 150 people. In Zai, at the time to the point out, now Democratic Republic of the Congo, the death rate was about 88% when the disease swept through villages along the Ebola River in the northern section of the nation. Ebola spread again in Gabon in 1996 to 1997, taking 65 lives. Three outbreaks in Zai between 2001 and 2003 killed over 200 people. The last major outbreak before 2014 came in Zai was in 2007, when 260 people died. Ebola has also spread in Uganda, the Republic of the Congo, Brazil, Brazzaville, so the point out, South Africa, and Côte d'Ivoire. The, the outbreak at the time, however, had originally killed more than three times the number of people that died in all previous outbreaks. It was also the first outbreak that has not been contained uh, looking at that particular moment. The current outbreak that at that particular time in 2014 also differs from earlier ones that it moved quickly and the interiors to coastal capital cities of Conakry in Freetown and Moravia with their crowd conditions and impoverished situation at that particular moment. The virus came attacked humans and animals. The symptoms are flu-like with fever, sore throat, headache, muscle and also stomach pain followed by vomiting diarrhea and rash, if not treated early with fluids and drugs, including those still in the experimental stages at this particular time of the Ebola crisis. The patient's liver and kidney function decrease 
and the death soon occurs. Ebola is only contagious when it's physical contact and patient's bodily fluid, but the patient remains contagious even after death. There are also 21 days period when initial symptoms can occur and thus the observance of over 20 of a 21 day quarantine will determine if there is a free of uh, the disease. Thomas Eric Duncan arrived in Dallas from Liberia, one of the three West African nations at the epicenter of the current, uh, at that particular moment, the Ebola outbreak. The other two nations are Guinea and Sierra Leone. Those three nations have distinct histories, language, customs, although in the interior of all three, the way Ebola outbreak is the strongest. Indigenous people often uh, with kingship ties in other nations, frequently across a match of holy borders. So to point out, Guinea, the most populous of the three nations, was home to a number of small African states that were eventually conquered and colonized by the French during the 1900s. Known for nearly six decades as French uh, Guinea, it broke away from France in 1958 and became an independent nation. Today, Guinea has an estimated population that has grown we're looking at that current nation. Sierra Leone, south of the Guinea but north of the Liberia, was founded by British abolitionists in, in 1792, who envisions it as a settlement area for African American free by Great Britain during the American Revolution, as well as black freed during the British Isles. Jamaican Maroons were also persuaded to settle in Liberia, which became the British colony in 1800, but which gained its independence. 1961. Sierra Leone has an estimated present-day population that has grown to a huge number. Looking at that, Liberia was founded in 1821 by formerly enslaved people from the United States who were sent to the region by the American Colonization Society. Liberia officially became independent in 1847. Also, along with Ethiopia, was the first African nation which escaped colonization after the of Africa in 1885. Today, Liberia has a population that has grown extensively. Despite the different historical nature of all three nations, have remained impoverished with regards to suffering corruption, dictatorship, and also uh, post-independent challenges that the countries face. Many of their best physicians, scientists, and healthcare workers have immigrated to those two different nations, preferably to work in Europe. United States and other North American regions. The two decades of civil war in Liberia and Sierra Leone especially have weakened havoc on the already modest health care infrastructure. Thus, when Ebola came in, it struck, three, it struck through the three nations and West African least prepared uh, withstanding the ravage of this uh, terrible disease. By April 4, 2014, healthcare workers in all three nations knew they were facing a potential a medical catastrophe with the rise of later Ebola virus. Moving ahead, as of May 26, the World Health Organization confirmed that deaths from Ebola had occurred in neighboring Sierra Leone, and by June 17, the disease had reached Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, when the death toll reached 350 by June 23. The World Health Organization described the Ebola epidemic in West Africa as the worst uh, the world has ever seen at the time. Considering that, as of July 25th, Nigeria confirmed its first Ebola cases. Dr. Shil Uma Khan, who led efforts to combat the outbreak of Ebola in Sierra Leone, Khan had flown uh, from uh, Monrovia to Lagos. Uh, looking at that, uh, Nigeria on the 25th of July. On July 29th, he died from the disease. International health officials now fear an outbreak in Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, with an estimated population then at the time over 200 million people, would mark a new level of crisis for entire African continent and perhaps the world. Meanwhile, Ebola continued to ravage Guinea, Sierra Leone, and also Liberia. On July 30th, Liberia closed its schools and quarantined the most affected communities, actions that will be allowed in Sierra Leone and Guinea. People residing in resource poor nations such as Sierra Leone at the time and Guinea and Liberia are far more likely to die from the prevented disease as such as Ebola due to the ravaged uh, poverty which affected inequality in infrastructure and income during the Ebola outbreak. There are also an increased risk for medical personnel who reduces needles not properly sterilized at the time fighting to save life. The long-standing religious practice of washing 
uh, dead bodies uh, before buried do automatically increase the risk of family members coming into contact uh, with the bodily fluid of the infected person. The international pharmaceutical industry, moreover, has invented relatively little in developing an effective Ebola vaccine. Until August 2nd, 2014, the outbreak of Ebola had not affected people outside West Africa. On that day, however, Dr. Kent Bradley, a white missionary doctor who had contacted Ebola, had flown from Moravia, Liberia, to Emory University Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia, for treatment. He became the first American to contract the disease, who was then returned to the United States for treatment. Three days later, Nancy Ritterblue, another white missionary working with Dr. Bradley, who also had also contacted uh, Ebola in Liberia, was also flown to Emory for treatment. By August 2nd, by August 12th, so they point out, as the death toll rose to over 1,000 in West Africa, Miguel Pajeris, a Spanish priest st stricken with Ebola in West Africa, died in Madrid, Spain on August 13th. He became the first European to die from the disease. The two missionaries treated at Emory, however, were declared free of the disease by August 21. Meanwhile, desperation mounted in Monrovia as security forces who had quarantined the slum areas to keep disease confined to one section of the capital. Fear shot to control frightened and angry crowd trying to break out of the quarantine. A teenager was killed, the first victim of the Ebola who, di who died uh, not directly from the disease. Given that to this particular point, all of the deaths were in West Africa and two services saviors, so the point of survivors, were in the United States. It became increasingly apparent that many that were only affected treatment for Ebola was outside of three most affected nations. By August 28, the number of Ebola dead had risen to over 1,500. On that day, Senegal, situated north of Guinea, and with a population that increased to just over 15 million at the time, reported its first case of Ebola. Six days later, September 10, the number of dead reached 1,900, and Dr. Rick Sacre, a third U.S. missionary infected with Ebola while in Liberia, was flown to Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska, for treatment. Moving ahead, when the death toll in West Africa reached over 2,000 by September 5th, United States President then, Barack Obama, two days later, went on national television to explain the Ebola crisis, its impact on West Africa, and potential impact on the rest of the world. He declared that the United States uh, needed to do more and would do more to help the Ebola, uh, the control the Ebola disease. When the death toll reached over 2,500 on September 16, the United States uh, sent 3,000 military engineers to West Africa to build health clinics and to help train African healthcare personnel. They faced particularly daunting challenges as of, uh, over, of over 375 healthcare workers who had contracted Ebola since March 2014. 211, uh, that's over 56% had died. Others abandoned their posts out of fear. Thomas Eric Duncan must have known he was sick risk for the disease. His barrage of major reports in Liberia and other West African nations could have having escaped at the time. While in Liberia, Duncan was employed as a personal driver and general manager for the safety cargo company, although he abruptly quit his job on September 4th. On September 15th, he helped transport a pregnant woman, uh, Matalena Williams, who had Ebola symptoms, to a local hospital where she was refused admittance because of lack of space. William later died of Ebola uh, virus. By that point, Duncan probably realized that if he had acquired the disease from his September 15th contact with Magdalena Williams, or perhaps earlier, that his best chance for effective treatment uh, was the United States. He may have also known that 53% of his fellow Liberians uh, who had contacted Ebola disease or since March, 30% had already died. On September 19th, Duncan, who had received an American visa for his first trip to the United States, went to Monrovia Airport and, according to Liberian officials, did not disclose his history of contact with Ebola before boarding the Brussels Airlines flight to Brussels. Duncan was symptoms-free and non-contagious when he left Monrovia and when he arrived in Dallas September 20th. There is no evidence that he contaminated anyone 
doing the flight from Morovia to Brussels to Washington, D.C., and then on to Dallas on September 24th. However, he became showing symptoms at the time of Ebola and arrived at the emergency room at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, Texas. There, he reported hospital personnel that he had just arrived from Africa and was experiencing fever and symptoms pain. Despite international media frenzy around the Ebola in West Africa, Duncan was misdiagnosed and also having the flu and sent back to his apartment where he remained in presence of Louis Troll and her, her five-year-old uh, children. Looking ahead, on September 28, 2014, as the Ebola death toll rose to 3,000 uh, in, fig in numbers, Duncan had to be taken back to ambulance back to the same hospital that sent him away for crucial days earlier. His condition was now far worse and the Texas Health Presbyterian officials contacted the U.S. Center for Disease Control CDC in Atlanta, Georgia. The CDC confirmed that he was in the initial stages of the Ebola disease. Duncan would now forever be known as Patient Zero, the first diagnosed case of Ebola in the United States. If you are new to this channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. By October 4th, the worldwide death toll from Ebola reached over 3,500. Meanwhile, Duncan's condition worsened. On October 8, 2014, only about uh, six months after the first case were reported in his native Liberia, and 18 days after he arrived in Dallas, Thomas Eric Duncan became the first person to die of Ebola in American soil. These were the chain of events that happened uh, during this time. We want to wish the family of the Duncan and the persons who came across this and the medical professionals who were trying to save his life at the time. We want to thank you with regards to this chain of events. Hopefully, we've informed you with regards to Patient Zero. We want to thank you for watching our channel. We we'll encourage you to watch some of our other videos with regards to the African continent. For now, we want to thank you. We're looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.